You're already bored? I haven't even started. You're already bored. The little dog is already bored, and we have not even started the ranch yet like that. Anyway, it is an exciting Friday night here in Doomsday Trailer. Another Friday night begins here on, that would be February 9th, 2024. And I did not even have a rant plan when I was down at the dock uh, having my sunset margarita like an hour and a half ago. Then I come back here to uh, the mainstream media news for February 9th. Gee, we got uh, No Shit Sherlock. We have got Ain't Gonna Happen Denial. All kinds of, I need to start doing a, maybe I just need to start a one day of the week just doing an ain't gonna happen file. After this rant, I'm going to start maybe making it ain't gonna happen Friday or something. Uh, but anyway, we're going to start with no shit Sherlock. Right here, I do not believe it, Fish Eating Creek has made it uh, to the national news. You know, Fish Eating Creek, one of my favorite places in Florida, one where it's probably, you know, where you can get uh, about as far from, uh, from humans uh, as anywhere else. Fish Eating Creek. Uh, but here we are in the uh, in Yahoo News. One of Florida's rarely seen panthers is killed in most unusual way. Yes, one of Florida's endangered panthers was discovered dead on February 1st after a freight train ran it over. State wildlife officials say that two-year-old male panther was walking across a railroad trestle. This is the big railroad trestle that crosses the creek. Was walking across a railroad trestle over Fish Eating Creek in Glades County when it was apparently caught off guard. Huh. A witness on the train saw the panther take off running and the, and the train attempted to slow down, but it was too late. Yes, the clueless moron panther could have jumped into the creek below, but chose not to for some reason. Well, I, I have, I, I, well, I've never crossed the trestle, but I've been underneath this trestle, which is about 40 feet in, in, in the fucking air, and Fish Eating Creek is one of the most alligator-filled swamps in the state of Florida. So, uh, so a, a, a Florida panther gone across the bridge, uh, there's a damn freight train coming. He goes, okay, uh, I've got a freight train to outrun. Uh, I, I can jump off a 40-foot bridge uh, or, or I can go swimming with alligators. For some reason, the uh, uh, the panther decided to outrun the oncoming freight train, but it was too late. Uh, there you go. Five panthers have been killed so far this year in Florida. Obviously, the most common cause of death <clears throat> is vehicle collision, which is the same for Florida black bears, for Southern California cougars. It's called humans. Let's, let, let's, let's make no under, do not, the, the most common cause of death for Florida panthers is not vehicle collisions, it is humans. Vehicles without a human in the vehicle. What, it, what it's saying here, it, this is implying that it's Florida Panthers colliding with parked vehicles. 
Okay, for some reason, uh, you know, let's make it clear what's killing the Panthers and everything else. And of course, if it isn't vehicles, then let's just get to uh, mining. To you know, this is probably something to do with some damn green energy saving the planet. Been hearing about this one for several years. This is out of the, another one out of the no shit Sherlock. We're going to go from the fish-eating fish eating creek swamp, which is about here. We're going to go up to the Okefenokee swamp, the single biggest uh, wildlife refuge east of the Mississippi. Proposed mine outside Georgia's Okefenokee swamp nears approval despite environmental damage concerns. Do you think so? A mining company's plan to mine minerals near the edge of the Okefenokee Swamp and its federally protected wildlife refuge neared final approval as Georgia regulators, you know, uh, I guess Georgia environmental regulators which is obviously a, uh, an oxymoron. Georgia regulators released draft permits for the project, which opponents say could irreparably harm the natural treasure. Yes, Twin Pines Minerals of Birmingham, Alabama has been slaving away for five years to mine titanium dioxide less than three miles from the boundary of the Okefenokee National Wildlife Refuge. Federal scientists have warned that mining near the Okefenokee's bowl-like rim could damage the swamp's ability to hold water. Interior Secretary Deb Holland in 2022 declared the proposed mine poses an unacceptable risk to the fragile ecosystem at the Georgia-Florida line. Quote, this is a dark day in Georgia's history, said Josh Marks, an Atlanta environmental attorney. Uh, EPD may have just signed a death warrant for the Okefenokee Swamp our state's greatest natural treasure. That's from the no shit Sherlock. So we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna go from the Okefenokee Swamp. I guess we're gonna go a lot farther north and uh, well I guess just out into the ocean a few miles. Many versions of this story uh, which I'm sure all of the doomers, I'm sure Paul Beckwith and all the the crew of Doomers uh, have their panties all in a wad on this one. I like this guy from good old AP named Seth Borenstein. I usually am okay with uh, Seth Borenstein's reporting on the mainstream media. Take it away, Seth. Seth, ocean system that moves heat gets closer to collapse which could cause weather chaos. An abrupt shutdown of Atlantic Ocean currents that could put large parts of Europe in a deep freeze is looking a bit more likely and closer than before as the new complex computer simulation finds a cliff-like tipping point looming in the future. Wow, we have another cliff-like tipping point looming in the future. A long worried nightmare scenario triggered by Greenland's ice sheet melting from global warming still is at least decades away, if not longer, but maybe not the centuries that it once seemed. A new study in Friday Science Advances finds the study the first to use complex simulations and include multiple factors 
uses a key measurement to track the strength of vital overall ocean circulation, which is slowing. Uh, anyway, we are, we've been hearing this one how long this is a uh, study lead author Renee Van Weston climate scientist from the Netherlands quotes quote we are moving closer to the collapse but we're not sure how much closer we are heading towards a tipping point do you think so when this global weather calamity may happen is quote the million dollar question which we unfortunately cannot answer at this moment Van Weston said he said it's likely a century away but still could happen in his lifetime he just turned 30 Quote, it also depends on the rate of climate change we are inducing as humanity, he said. Uh, anyway, no, but I'm sure uh, you've, you've heard it already. Uh, so let you know, of course, the rate of climate change is, uh, is, is what... Uh, Obviously, the big story in the past couple of days uh, has finally, even the mainstream media has just thrown in the towel pretty much and, and, and admitted we have already hit this bullshit one and a half C target, this laughing stock target. And now we have a new one, which really has the, uh, the uh, denialist uh, the ain't gonna happen denialist uh, panties in a wide. Oops! Scientists may have miscalculated our global warming timeline. Yes. Um, I'm just gonna read the uh, little, uh, you know, the little summation it at the top because it quickly gets very confusing and then of course all the denialists hop on uh, talking about those doomers, those alarmist doomers. The Paris Climate Accord in 2015 set an ambitious goal of keeping global temperatures at one and a half degrees Celsius above pre-industrial temps, but a new study says we might have blown past that threshold several years ago. A new study from University of Western Australia Oceans Institute studied uh, long-lived these sponges and created an ocean temperature timeline dating back to the 1700s. While the study claims that we surpassed one and a half degrees Celsius in 2020, four years ago. Other scientists question if data from just one part of the world is enough to capture the immense thermal complexity of our oceans. And this brings into this whole thing about when do you set the baseline? Uh, you know, where do you start the baseline. Uh, anyway, uh, if we didn't pass it in 2020, we sure as hell passed it in 2023. But uh, as I mentioned yesterday in one article, and now it is, uh, good God, the the uh, ain't gonna happen denialist. The, these the, it, we have already hit this target, and you should see these uh, the, these little Pollyannas, uh, apocalyptic, hopium addicts, just acting like just because uh, we've been there for the past year, they're still acting like we have not hit the target, 
and and we can still turn this freight train around. Uh, I'm just going to move some of this. Though breaking the Paris Agreement was long expected to happen, even by chief negotiator. No, you're not leaving the rant. You're not going to start this. You're going to stick it out for the rant. Sancho Panza has just had it with, with ranting. He's decided he's no longer going to be part of Collapse Chronicles videos. Just deal with it, dog. Earn your chicken. Although breaking the Paris Agreement was long expected to happen, even by Chief Negotiator John Kerry, we have now undoubtedly entered the era of coping with devastating climate change, not simply trying to avoid it. Without, okay, this gets progressively weird, weirder and weirder, without being Pollyannish. Are you being Pollyannish? Do I need to name you uh, Sancho Pollyanna? Just deal with it. You're a doomer dog. You're not going to run off from this rant and deny it ain't going to happen. Without being Pollyanna-ish, the situation is dire. We can look we can look to some positive developments in science and logistics. In the U.S., for instance, as, uh, okay, as I, I want you to dissect this bullshit. Okay, in the U.S., for instance, as the frequency and, and cost of natural disasters keeps going up, the death rate is actually dropping. From the 1980s to the 2010s, the number of billion dollar disasters per year rose 297 percent from 3.3 to 13. Unfortunately, unfortunately, deaths also went up from 295 to 523, but that comes out to a much smaller 75 increase, 75 percent increase. So the billion dollar disasters are up 297 percent, but the people dying from the disasters are only up 75 percent. Meanwhile, the country's population has increased 46%, meaning that the growth rate in fatalities on a per capita basis is even less. A smaller increase in deaths is nothing to celebrate. But it is a sign that we are finding ways to make natural disasters less deadly. Uh, uh, okay, I, I read that like six times. I have no idea what that fucking word salad is supposed to mean. Uh, I, I mean, whoever came up with that is it, it, so... Uh, it, it, it deep in uh, ain't gonna happen denial, and of course, technology is making these relative gains possible. Yes. Uh, here's this uh, ain't gonna happen denier describing how AI is helping his team better predict natural disasters. So AI can let you know a little bit more ahead of time before you die in a natural disaster. But speaking of ain't gonna happen, <coughs> damn. Speaking of ain't gonna happen, that we have a double layer. 
of ain't gonna happen here. U.S. Wildlife Service considering endangered status for tiny snail near Nevada lithium mine. So, so the implication here, and and and, and what all of these uh, uh, these uh, these absolute uh, ain't gonna happen deniers are are banking on or, or praying for is that they're going to use this little bitty snail a little bit bigger than a pinhead to stop this giant lithium mine in, in Nevada because it is threatening to annihilate one of our fellow earthlings off uh, off the planet but there's two layers of ain't going to happen first it ain't going to happen that it is going to get listed as endangered. And then you have the backup to that ain't going to happen. That, that We have to make a new column. Even if it does happen, it ain't going to happen. Even if this little fucking snail uh, is listed as an endangered species because of this lithium mine uh, that could obliterate it off the planet, it ain't going to stop the lithium mine. This, this little snail, uh, any, any clueless fucking moron thinking that some little snail is going to uh, stop uh, this giant lithium mine. Good God, pull your head out of your ass. Alright, I think we have... Two more, or, uh, what, which one is this one? Uh, oh no, I, I lost one of my ain't gonna happens. What was my other ain't gonna happen? But, uh, oh well, Mikey, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna wind up with one more ain't gonna happen from Amazon Watch from Ecuador. <laughs> Been hearing about this uh, oil drilling in Yasuni National Park. Uh, all, all of this crap for over 20 years. Uh, first, uh, all of that shit about giving Yasuni National Park constitutional protection and then uh, that bullshit that went on for years with, with, with trying to get a other country to to pay Ecuador not to mine inside a national park and then I don't know how many of you remember uh, just in August of last year this big vote so they took it to a referendum and uh, directly to Ecuadorian voters, should we allow oil drilling in, uh, in Yasuni National Park, which, you know, Yasuni to Ecuador is, is pretty much like Yosemite or Yellowstone uh, or the Great Smoky Mountains to the U.S. You know, it's probably Ecuador's most treasured uh, national Park. It's certainly the most biodiverse national park. So anyway, so what happened uh, in August? Despite a historic referendum in August 2023 in which Ecuadorians overwhelmingly voted to keep over 700 million barrels of crude oil permanently in the ground underneath Yasuni National Park, the government of Ecuador has gone ahead with plans to ignore the popular vote and continue drilling for oil in one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. But, don't worry, uh, oh, that's, well, well, a little bit, I'm sorry, a little bit more. Ecuador's vote was not close. An overwhelming 60% of the 
of Ecuadorians chose to protect the Sunni after fighting for a decade to get the referendum on the ballot. It was a major victory for noble savages, biodiversity, and the climate in a country that is the largest producer of Amazon crude and has seen decades of contamination and human rights abuses at the hands of the oil industry. So that is the backdrop, but don't worry, you, you can take action to stop drilling in Yasuni. You can take action to stop drilling by sending a message to defend Yasuni. Send a message to President Naboa of Ecuador urging him to protect Yasuni and respect the rights of noble savages. With your support, we can defend the Amazon. Yes, I will send a message. I will send a message to the President of Ecuador who just uh, completely bulldozed over a 60% majority of his own citizens' wishes. But if a bunch of people in the, I guess, in Dunnellan, Florida, if some doomer in Dunnellan, Florida signs a petition, uh, the president of Ecuador is going to stop everything he's uh, done. Um, and say, okay, that doomer's right. There you go. So what is the message to President Naboa? Dear President Naboa, I am writing to you urgently regarding the recent developments concerning the Yasuni National Park. Yes. In August, Ecuadorians made history by voting overwhelmingly, blah, blah, blah. I am deeply concerned by recent announcements indicating your intention to ignore the popular vote and continue drilling for oil. Yes. It is essential to honor the democratic process. Yes. And respect the will of the people. Uh-huh. Yasuni National Park, blah, 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 the fuck, blah. I, I, I am sure the uh, president of Ecuador completely uh, in, in the pocket of big oil is going to uh, drop everything he's doing and just move those bulldozers out of that national park. Ain't gonna happen. Your fucking little message to President Naboa isn't gonna do shit. Ain't gonna happen. Your little snail ain't gonna happen. Uh, but anyway, I am gonna start uh, an ain't gonna happen roundup. We're going to call it Ain't Going to Happen Fridays. So we have Good News Monday, uh, which sometimes will be Ain't Going to Happen because, uh, I mean, Ain't Going to Happen uh, can be good news. Uh, and then the Ain't Going to Happen, which is kind of the no shit Sherlock, Ain't Going to Happen on Friday. But uh, I'm going to have to wrap this up and uh oh yeah it's sandy show tonight so let's head over to environmental coffee house and see what uh their those doomers over at environmental coffee house are ranting about tonight my guys did you survive that rant you say no pop i wanted to get the hell away from that rant I'm an AGH denier. This is my AGH denying little dog here. Oh my guys.
Okay, you can run off now. I don't care what you do now. You can take off.